Hey friend, Mina here. If you're listening to this in real time, I wanted to let you know that the doors are open to multi-stream machine for a very brief time. We get a ton of questions about our signature course, multi-stream machine. So allow me to paint a picture for you. Imagine if you could build a sustainable and thriving business that can not only support itself, but also pay you the salary of your dreams. Imagine if you had a clear roadmap in all things Product Boss so you can create plans and sell more without it being so hard and confusing. Imagine if you could get more customers to easily find you and buy from you without spinning your wheels or being stuck on social media. That's why we created Multi-Stream Machine for product-based business owners just like you to help you 2X to 4X your sales and to grow your revenue streams to create a sustainable business that makes you money in months and not years. Multi-Stream Machine is all about action and implementation. It's a course that will tell you exactly what to do without the guesswork and without the heavy lifting of figuring it out all on your own. It's relieving, it's inspiring, and most of all, it's profitable. So what are you waiting for? Head over to www.multistreammachine.com or click on the link in the show notes to check it out before the doors close. I'll see you over there. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my fabulous, beautiful, and joyful co-host, Mina kunlo Sitep. Hey, Mina. Hey, Jacqueline. So I got all those descriptive words because while we're going to talk about marketing strategies for 2021, those that you should start using right away, we are sharing that one of our marketing strategies is video, and we're trying to show up more. So we are currently broadcasting this podcast episode on YouTube live, on our Facebook page live, and in our Facebook group live. So congratulations, Mina. We have kicked off 2021 in a fabulous way. I mean, this is really about strategic um, planning for marketing, but in a creative way. And we're kind of modeling for you how to experiment and get creative for something that works. And for Mm -hmm. us, for 2020, video was really fun to play around with. So here we are, you know, like we said, rolling the dice with the tech gods here and seeing what happens. And I got those words because for those of you watching live with us over on Facebook and on YouTube, I asked for ways to describe Mina. So I got a whole bunch of ways to describe her. She really like eye rolled, but then it was helpful <laughs> to me. It's more like cringe, but thank you for those beautiful words from everybody. I really appreciate it. All right. So getting into into this awesome, amazing episode that I'm really excited to share with you and those of you watching live, yay, because you get like a head start on this. So we're going to discuss the top five marketing strategies to use in your business right now. So number one would be moving online is here to stay. So what we're saying is that while 2020 forced people to get online, we've quickly moved into this realm of training customers and consumers that online is the place to be and online is the place to stay. So if you've gotten online, it's not something that in 2021, you're going to just kind of jump off of it. We want to go deeper into the online world and um, marketing and selling your products online. Yeah. I think that people are now living their lives online. You know, we always saw it way before when um, online shopping was going to move online. 2020 really forced everybody's hand in doing all consuming and purchasing online. Also having our kids virtually going to school online, um, families meeting online to gather 
right? Special events happening online, um, relationships being built online. So really thinking about all that. And it really is here to stay because people are, you know, now they're past the learning curve a little bit. They were thrown into the water, uh, thrown into the pool when you learn how to swim, right? And it's just like, how, what, what's this Zoom thing? How do I log in? Um, how do I, you know, uh, learn online? How do I buy online? Now we're past the learning curve and it's, it's, uh, we're, we're moving, we're forging ahead and this is where it's going to stay. Right. So you're thinking, okay, I'm online ladies. Now what? So first we want to think, we want you to think, how can you up your customer's experience online? So while 2020 might've felt a little bit scrambly to you, um, some of you maybe lean into more in-person shows. Some of you did, you know, wholesale and it was business to business. We weren't really sure what was happening, but what we did tell you and kept telling you all in the very beginning of 2020 was, get online, show up online, sell without a website, right? Which is something that we've, we've done. But now that you've done that, you've taken that step, whatever it is, whether you were selling online before and you've really upped that, or you've dipped your toes into it kind of as a bandage to whatever had changed. Now we need to think, okay, we're online to stay. How do we up our customers' experience online? What do we do with them and for them to make them come back and continue to want to buy more? Right. I mean, I think it's another thing we saw in 2020 kind of merging with the online life is that we really came back to uh, what our customers needed, right? Hearing them, listening to them and listening to them online. Now people are getting very specific about this is what I want in this experience. And they're telling you, right? Uh, We heard from people, they want things to be delivered in a timely manner. <laughs> yes, we all heard that over and over. We all heard that. But the other idea here, and you know, we teach this a lot to our multi stream machine students, but we one of the models in there is how to get your website to sell for you. And I think that this is very similar to a little bit of what we're talking about here. When, if you imagine, and I want you to all imagine, if you had a brick and mortar store and somebody walked into that store, what, when you think about the difference between a store that you walk into that you like and want to go back to, and ones where you walk in and you're like, you quickly walk out of, what's the difference? Maybe there's somebody who's welcoming you at the door. Hey, can I help you with anything? But they're not too pushy. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm just browsing. And then you get to just browse, right? Um, Then it might be that you have a question about something and it's easy to access that customer service person, that person again in the store and say like, hey, I saw this. Do you have any more of that? Or um, what do you think of the smell or, or instead of them, like trying to open a package and smell something or, or try a sample, you know, there's, there's ways to describe to them or have samples and and that sort of thing. So I want you to think about that in-person experience. And then how do you convert that online? What do you need to do to your website, to the buying experience for your customer in order to get them to say like, yes, I like being here. I want to come back for more. This has been a very easy process for me. So it makes it really easy to check out online. Right. Online, you know, when you sell digitally and you, you, you are doing that virtually, you do have to transfer that experience over. And I think you have to be willing to guide them. Right. So before where you might've been able to just, people would go online. They knew the experience was just the experience. It was just, I go here, I buy here sort of thing. Now it's different. Now it's more emphasis on that experience. You're guiding them through, you're holding their hand. You're not pushing them, but you're there if they need that help. And you're describing things for them. You're being their hands, you're being their eyes, you're being their senses. And you're putting that online So they can really live that experience vicariously through you, but you're the guide. That's the special part of all this is that you're able to kind of um, make that what you want it to be, but that's what they're really looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think when we get into bestseller secrets challenge, so like I said in the beginning, if you go to bestsellersecretschallenge.com, we're going to actually help you look at what you're selling and to sell more of what's working in your business. So we're going to help you figure that out. And then how do you continue to sell that to your customers? Whether you have a couple of customers, whether you have thousands of customers, whatever that is. And I think that's part of how to up the customer's experience. You're selling them something that you know is working. 
right? And mm-hmm. and you know when they buy it, it's going to be the thing that they're excited about, that they love, that they're like, yes, this was a good recommendation. And then what does that do? It allows for them to come back and buy more. Yeah. So here's what we want you to do for this one, because moving in online is here to stay. We want you to keep inviting people to meet you online. Mm-hmm. So that means even if it's your family members, your friends, your personal network, your people that you, you know on Facebook, your people you know on Instagram, push them over to your website. Let them know where to go so they can keep showing up where you want them to be, right? So before it might have been, oh, I don't even know what the, my neighbor does. Now it's, hey, check this out on my website. And, and then you're there with them, right? So just making sure that they know which space you want them to go. It's just like how, um, hey, we should meet up for Christmas. I will, here's the Zoom link that you need to go to and we'll open presents at 3 p- p.m. You know, so just make sure they know where to go because move them through that journey to be online with you. Mm -hmm, 100%. Okay, so strategy number two. You've heard us say this before if you're in our community, but we'll say it again, that people buy from people. People want to buy from real people. So what is the strategy here? It's actually putting a face to your brand. It's Mm -hmm. giving your brand, the product that you sell, something that has some a person to it because ultimately that's going to be the thing that connects uh, to your customers because people want to buy from real people. They want to support small businesses and they want that two-way engagement. We talk about this a lot as well that remember they want a dialogue versus just a monologue of you talking directly to them. Yeah, they want that exchange and that relationship building and they want a human you know, if, if anything that 2020 taught us, it was that humankind is, is, is literally evolving, right? Of what is going to happen in 2020? Everything felt so scary. Everything felt so unprecedented. And now we're moving to a more hopeful time. So humankind, all of us together, we all need each other, which is why we need that realness, right? Of what is the humanization of your brand that you could bring? If it's not you, it has to be some sort of, you know, humanizing of your brand, a story behind it, a team, um, something where they have a person to person type of relationship that they can get behind, right? That they can root for, that they can um, attach themselves to. Absolutely. So when you're thinking about that and we're thinking about a strategy, this is probably one of the easiest things that you can do. You can start showing up. Now, I coach a lot of fashion brands. I have some, you know, high end clients that I coach (laughs) with their clothing lines. And one of the hardest things that I have actually found with them is pushing them to show up live. And so some of them or show up, show up in person to speak from them as the business owner directly to their customer. You know, I think a little bit of it is a little to become the face of the brand. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Like huge pushback, like even in the comments are, um, I help them sometimes with their social posts. And while I might tell them like, Hey, post this, I get pushed back. Like that feels too personal. Mm. And it might be the, It might be the age range of my average client, let's call it, where social and being personal on social isn't as comfortable to them. It might also be the way that things were. So if you look at bigger brands, right, a lot of times those bigger brands separated themselves. The brand just stood alone and Mm -hmm. there wasn't a face to it. But what we're seeing, what this trend is that we're seeing in 20, that we saw in 2020 and that you need to bring with you into 2021 is that people wanted to buy from real people. They wanted connection. They wanted to know that if they were spending their hard earned dollars, that it was doing something more than just supporting big business, going to target into the abyss of whatever, right? Everything had value to it. Like we've, we've chosen to spend our money on things that are valuable to us, whatever that is. And then also something that it's, it's that idea of, mission-based or give back, well, think about it. If you start to show this is my family, um, we're a family-run business, this is how we put it together, this is how we ship it, it allows your customer to connect with you and, and know that their dollar is going to go further with you, the small business owner. Yeah. What we really saw was that people were really more thoughtful with their dollars, right? Mm-hmm. They really thought about where is my dollar going? And it was easier for them to spend when they saw where it was going to right? Um, Oftentimes people will stick with big box because of the convenience, 
but there's this other percentage of money that they have that they want to know that, oh, this is where it's going. And I actually know, you know, they, they're able to, when we say put a face to the brand, it's because we're wanting you to walk them through no like, and trust. If you've ever heard of no like, and trust, it's that brand awareness, which is no like is that they, you know, enjoy you and your brand and trust is that they become bonded to you and they buy from you and they refer you. And when you have a human um, face to it or even a personification of where that money is going to, they can like that determine if they trust you or not. Mm-hmm. You can go to a customer and say, hey, will you buy this? And if they answer yes, that probably means that they trust you. Mm-hmm. If they answer no, it probably means that they're still in that like stage and they need some more time with it, some more touch points, some more engagement that happens with that. And I will tell you, um, Sarah over here on Facebook said that lives are scary. Yes, they are. But you just imagine how long, um, and that's scary for everybody. That's scary. The consumer even knows how scary it is for a small brand to show up. But imagine how far that gets you in their mind as far as trust. If that person keeps showing up for me, that person keeps showing up for me. I'm sure they live a busy life. I'm sure I see their business. I see where the money goes towards, but they see you showing up and that go in their book, in everybody's book, that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And even if you mess up. Right. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We jumped on here in the very beginning of YouTube. You can hear our whole upload section. <laughs> I don't think we could edit it. So good luck. But yeah. the, other, the other place that I actually saw this happen, and some of this might resonate for some of you, is in the shipping delays, right? I ordered a computer that hasn't gone here. So um, we ordered <laughs> you Costco. ended up going to have to buy one, right? Yeah, I had to go do curbside. We ordered from Costco a computer for my kids, and it said it was shipped, but there was no tracking. And we called both and Costco was like, I gave it to UPS and UPS was like, we didn't get it from Costco. Some, somewhere, some elves have my computer. So that happened. And so we had a message from one of somebody in our community or one of our students. And they were saying that they got an email um, that they had shipped, but obviously got lost in the abyss of shipping. And they were like, are you a real person? Like, are you, is this an online scam? (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, are you, no, yeah. you, seriously, yeah. she got it. She's like, is this an online scam? Are you just taking my money? How do you not know where my package is? And it's true, right? Like all of us feel a little bit like, is this an online scam? Mm-hmm. I mean, Costco, I can validate, right? I could be Especially like, well, if it's a Facebook ad or something, yeah. you and know, we, it's, it's happened for all of us that like something has gotten lost in the mail inevitably at the end of 2020. So what would have happened if you got that message, but you've been showing up online and you've been doing videos and you've been letting your customers know like, Hey, we're you've shipping them communicating. The, yeah. We're, sh- we've shipped your gifts. We've shipped them out. Please email us at this, at the whatever company.com. And if you haven't gotten it or your tracking number isn't showing it and let me help you. Mm-hmm. And then if you got a message from someone like that, that maybe didn't follow you on social, or and you're sending this an email too, right? You would then then you would say, hey, watch this video, or you would resend them a video. You put a face to that, and all of a sudden you're like, don't worry, I've got you, friend. I'm sorry that it's lost. I will help you as best as I can. We're not a fake business. Look, it's here, me right here, you know? Mm-hmm. So knowing that, that's where people don't freak out and they'll be like, oh, okay, she's they're a real person. So I think it's also that connection with your customer. Yeah. And, and them at the end of the day, understanding that you don't control that as a small business, you don't control UPS or USPS. But one of the suggestions we gave to our product bosses was that to have their customers wrap up a photo of it that they print off and they can, they have something to open. And then when they open it up, they say it's coming in the mail. So at least it gives some sort of, some sort of solution. But at the end of the day, we're all doing the best that we can. And they're mm-hmm. able to see that when they have have a person that they know that acknowledges the way that they feel, right? They just sometimes want you to acknowledge that, oh, I understand it's lost. I'm right there with you. I'm frustrated too. I don't know what to do. I don't actually control those um, and I can't find where it is. But here's something that we can do in the meantime, right? You're on the same team. When you're on the same team, they're able to see you as a human, right? They're a person on that customer is, is seeing you as a, a business owner. We mm-hmm. actually missed this part about people buying from people, which is 
Good thing we added it in. Selling live. So also when people buy from people, we've seen this really big trend in selling live, like online virtual events that you might host or online trunk shows. So in the comments on Facebook, actually, Annika was digging in my ear about Annika of Hey Mavens. She's somebody, it's at Hey Mavens on Instagram. And she's somebody I want you all to follow. Hey Mavens XO. XO. Thank you. And the reason I say that is when we talk about people buying from people, we've seen Annika's business change in the past year. When she started, she sells lingerie. But when she started showing up more with the, of the face of her brand and engaging in communication with her customers, you'll see her ask them questions. You'll see her do fun little quizzes. She does a lot of dialogue, right? Back and forth mm-hmm. with her customers. engagement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she also sells live online. And I know, you know, Material Design Co., there's some other ones of our students that have done this as well. And Annika just wrote, she's watching live and she wrote, Your Cheer, who was another person I'm a huge fan of. It's a subscription box of holiday holiday gift boxes curated for for kids. So she said, Year Cheer did a great job at this. The New Year's Eve package is running late, but she sent an email with alternative online activities in the meantime. So right there has done strategy one, which is you know, in helping the customers experience online, right? By giving some sort of free activity. And two, saying I'm a real person, I'm sorry, these things are running late um, and having a, a conversation with her customer. So those are all just really great examples of communicating. communicating. Right. So just what we want you to do. So the number one was m- moving online is staying is here to stay. What we wanted you to do was to push people and invite them to be with you online. Now in the second one, people buy from people as well as this potential for live events, because we're seeing we're seeing it really light people up, right? And that's what they're wanting. They want the engagement. So here's what you can do in this case. You need to start showing up more online with your face. And I know it's scary because I as well am an introvert and I push myself hard and I continue to push myself. It becomes less comfortable. It certainly is not discomfort free, (laughs) you know? So while it get is scary at first, you do have to push yourself to keep doing it, right? So these marketing strategies, the reasons why they work is because they take practice. They take consistency. And so keep showing up online, show your face, start with maybe 10 seconds, then start with 30. And then maybe the end of that path is that you show up live for an online virtual event because that can be really scary, Right. But if you worked your way up there, then it'll be less scary. Annika as well started off with not even being the face of her brand. She worked her way up to there. We literally pushed her into the pool, like what we said of this video thing. And she showed up live and she connected with people. And there's things about it that lit her up and lit the customers up. And she pushed hard into it and she leaned into what was working. So you have to start somewhere. And for all of us, it's at ground zero of hey, we started here with no practice. And then here is where it will be less uh, uncomfortable. But, you know, like I used to have a friend, she doesn't live around here anymore, but she was a reporter for the local news. And she said that even when she would go on as a reporter, she always would get flustered at the very beginning. She was always, she would always feel nervous. So it wasn't like she had this, she had obtained this special skill set. It was like, la di da you know, perfection, it was that she had to continue to get better at it and lean into the discomfort, even though there was discomfort. It's like stepping into a cold pool, right? Yeah. Toe in first, jump in. I always jump in. But but maybe you have to step in and then eventually your brain goes, okay, I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Dip your toe. Then get on the first step. Then maybe mm. get to the second step. And then you're like, forget it. I'm doing this. I'm going in. For me, it's always just to my shoulders. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, um, you know what's so funny is that I always hated going into a cold pool. But the reason why I did was because when I had kids, I had to force myself to do it. They didn't care about the cold pool. So mm-hmm. maybe in this case, think about you have to do this for your baby, the business, because it needs you to show up in this way. True. Good job bringing that one together. Okay, so strategy number three. Okay, you guys are going to like this after we're telling you to go live and do all these things. (laughs) Not go live at first. Just show up on video, you know, Mm -hmm. people buy from people at first. But here's the thing you're going to like for strategy that we see happening in 2021 is shorter versions of content. So what does that mean? You can do something shorter, um, shorter videos, 
reels are short, right? They're 15 seconds to 30 seconds, short stories. So little quick um, bits on social media or Instagram um, stories. Mm -hmm. Text messaging is something that's short. We've started text messaging our community and they get little short nuggets of information or uh, mindset or encouragement from us on text messaging. And we're seeing text messaging in e-commerce as well. Um, also easy emails. So if you're on our email list, we've started doing our hot tip Tuesday, which mm -hmm. isn't a very long email. I'm sure a lot of you are subscribed to tons of emails that it's, are really long. It's a video that's not ever past six minutes. Mm -hmm. It was started at three. Now we're pushing it to six. <laughs> we can't stop talking. <laughs> it's the problem here. <laughs> but you get a quick video with a couple sentences of, you know, a call to action or something to do. And it's quick and easy. And so that's what we want you to think for your customers as well. Attention spans are dropping. Um, we've just trained ourselves into short nuggets of, of content. I feel like 30 seconds now feels a little too long, right? Like you're like first three <laughs> seconds, three seconds is all I can watch. I have to say I'm still in the boat of liking long form content, but right. I know that people are consuming differently for 2021. Mm -hmm. In 2020, we really saw our capacity to binge. <laughs> I mean, Nobody has been as much as they did in 2020. So you really saw like docu-series coming out. You saw old episodes of all these different things on Netflix. You saw people creating podcasts and podcast episodes becoming shorter. You really saw, you know, these short forms of content. TikToks really exploded. Instagram stories, Instagram reels came out. All these short forms of content with Quibi. the option, yeah, Quibi, uh, with the option to binge. Because while we do consume and we we like those short forms of content, we have such short attention spans that we like the dynamic of moving through things, right? So while 15 seconds on a reel might not might be the thing that entices people to consume, they they probably will consume the rest of your content if they like it, right? Mm -hmm. And same with like a docu series. I mean, I don't know if anybody who's ever stopped with one episode of anything. You know, says me every night right now trying to get through Virgin <laughs> River like it's my job. <laughs> and even, even when there's some episodes that I was watching um, Designated Survivor and in the second season, it's not that great. I'm like, I cannot wait till this ends. Like I'm being paid to watch it. Like, no, just quit at any time. And they actually have a third season that came out, I think. But yes, it was the same. I was like, I, last night I was like, I have to, James, I have to get into bed so I can watch Virgin <laughs> River. <laughs> So they are loving this. What's the next step? Because right. people, especially you'll see episodes start with us even pushing the button. And so you'll see that in social media that while those Instagram stories keep going, that's why you have to keep showing up because that one story is not going to suffice anybody. You have to keep showing up in these touch points and whether it be your face or a post or a behind the scenes or a, you know, keep it dynamic, but um, a whole bunch of short things can be done. Yeah, I think it was Christmas Day or I'm not sure, but we follow a lot of our community on, on Instagram. And I remember scrolling and I was like, every single thing was a, an Instagram reels, a oh, little really? quick video. Yeah. Every person that was showing up in our algorithm was a reels. And I'm so proud of all of you that have done that. I know, I know it's hard and it may not be you as the face of your brand, but you're creating short content that people will consume. It's really easy. People want to be entertained. So it's really easy to do that. So um, I want to encourage all of you that as you're thinking about showing up and creating content for your customers, think just think about what can you implement right away? Um, you know, are you doing more on social media, which we're going to talk about pretty soon, but are you doing more on social media? That's short content. Are you mm -hmm. going to start integrating text messaging like we do? Um, do you have super easy emails that are easy to consume and short? It's not the really long stories anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put a, we'll put a link in our show notes to our text message number. You can actually text us. It's really us. And um, we'd love for you to text us and kind of get in on it over there where we can keep encouraging you over there. Yeah. So we'll put a link. I want to say one more thing. People want to be entertained, but they also want to be informed you know, hence FOMO and, and fear of missing out, right? So while you are entertaining them, you also are informing them. Even when they watch an episode, uh, you know, a docuseries or anything, they're consuming content because they like that information that's coming into their brains. Mm -hmm. 
It kind of goes back to our three C's of content, right? Is it calendar content? It's something like I'm selling Mm -hmm. you Christmas stuff right now, or it's new year, Mm -hmm. new you. Is it um, cornerstone content, which is, this is how it's made, Mm -hmm. um, you know, behind the scenes, or is it conversational content where Annika did a great job of this? I think she did something like it was a Starbucks coffee one or something where she was showing how busy a product person is at that time of year kind of thing. And it was, and it was conversational. It was funny. So, yeah. Okay. Number four strategy. We want you to customize your customer's experience. So what I want you to think about here is what do you need to know about your customer's needs and wants, right? Is it, what do they need and what do they want in the right time and with the right product? So do you want to clarify that a bit? Yeah. I think that right now, just going off the information thing, consumers have never been more informed or educated than they are at this moment. They have a computer in their pocket and it's called the iPhone, you know? And so they have become really accustomed to getting their needs met and finding that wherever they need to online, going through the other things. So really customizing their experience in that um, you're giving them offers when you know that they want it. For example, what is the right offer for them? In Bestseller Secrets Challenge, you'll hear us talk about bundling or creating a, a higher cart value, things like that. But let's take that phrasing old school. It's called point of purchase. Point of purchase was when you're in a cash register line and you see the gum, you see the blind bags for the children now, you see the chocolates, you see um, all these different things. And it was a way for you to point of purchase, customize somebody's experience in a way because they're in the line and you're like, oh, I do need batteries. Oh, I do need, um, you know, I can't remember what all is there. Um, li- chapstick. Magazine, chapstick. Uh-huh. Um, gift cards, lots of those little items. Yeah. Yeah. So in the experience, there's a bunch of ways that you can do that in our, you know, at checkout when people are like, Hey, I know you love this, but you might also like this marketing online. That's called an upsell old school. That's called point of purchase, you Mm -hmm. know? So really thinking about how you can customize that experience because you know them, you are the best person to sell your product and you also can be putting the right offer in front of them when you know that would be super helpful to them. So one of the best places I've actually seen this happen is she's in our mastermind and it's Eco Chic Movement. She sells creams and products for babies and kids, especially Eco an eczema. Yeah. She's an eczema expert and she sells like, um, all natural products for babies. And we've just had two babies born in my family. And so I sent the baby shower gift set from there. Well, as I added it to my cart, right. And I was going to check out, I got a pop-up from her that was like, Hey, um, do you want to add this for right now? Can you, do you want to add this to your cart? And it was like an extra, it was an extra thing that wasn't part of this little bundle, but it was extra. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I will. So she made an extra 15 bucks off of me just from mm-hmm. me. Think, like that point of Egg. smart what? girl being in the mastermind, I right? Know, right? <laughs> I think she was doing it before working with us, but we won't take the credit, but I loved it. And I paid her more money and I was like, yes. And it kind of had like a, a ticking clock, but she knew what I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, she knew what I needed as the customer. So when you think about customizing your customer experience, right? We want you to think, about what you see also on Amazon where Amazon's like, you bought this, people will buy this, this, and this, right? Mm -hmm. Or you may also like this. Um, There's ways to do that with apps, depending on where you're selling. Um, The other way I want you to think about this is a lot of you are coming out of the busiest time of year. So you have a lot of customers that just purchased from you. You can go back to the customers that have already bought from you and customize something, right? You may look and say, okay, it looks like a lot of people bought my bracelets, right? You might and send an email marketing campaign to the bracelet people and say, Hey, um, I know you got these bracelets. Did you treat yourself? Grab one for yourself. Or it might be like, you like these bracelets. Have you seen the matching earrings? You might want to start to think, what did they purchase in the past? And how can I customize the experience for them? And as if they were to walk into my store and I remember them and be like, Hey, Mina, I remember you were here last week and you bought this. Did you see this new thing that we just got that came in? You should really check it out. It'll look great with that bracelet you bought. Yeah. I love this. So an action step here would be, I want you to think about two things right now. The first one is what would you recommend for somebody who's never known about your brand? So, okay. um, Hey, you're a new mom. Here's what I would recommend. 
and they would recommend the eczema cream because lots of moms have to deal with eczema for their babies. So that's the number one thing, new customer, the referral, customizing that experience for the new customer. Now let's think about the existing customer. Okay. So, oh, you've already bought the eczema cream. Here's what I would recommend in, you know, let's call it phase two. Here's what I would recommend now that you've already used that. We really recommend using these all natural diapers we have, you know, whatever it is, or this butt cream, um, diaper cream, you know, (laughs) whatever it is for your baby. And so that's the other recommendation. So you're customizing where they are by knowing what things that they're meeting, you're meeting them where they are. Right. Okay. So number five strategy, we're going to go quickly through this one. And you've heard us say it before, but we want you to go deep and not wide on social media channels. So what does that mean? In the past, it was be everywhere. Everyone be everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever is happening in the world. Right. But it's hard. There's so many places to show up. So what we want you to do is we want you to go deep and not wide on the social media channels. We want you to lean into your best platforms. We want you to do more of what's working. If you don't have a ton of traffic over on Facebook, I give you permission to stop. If you don't have a lot of traffic on Instagram, but you have a lot of traffic on Facebook, I give you permission to lean into Facebook and really not worry about Instagram. You can still, the cool thing about Facebook and Instagram is that you can cross post, but where are you showing up live? Where do you need to go deeper in and really focus on your strategy there? And so that's what we're going to see too, because where your customer is, they're going to show up and we don't want you to feel pulled amongst all the different platforms, but do more of what's working. Yeah, I think that the the major ones to think about are Facebook and Instagram. So which one of those two would you lean more into? Because they're at least the ones that are going to be monetized as a business, right? So we already know the trend is going where it's Mark Zuckerberg is going to make it a buying platform and all these algorithms are changing, but you can only, you know, do so much on Facebook and you can only do so much on Instagram. So f- from the get-go pick one of those. Which one is working best for you usually has to do with age range and engagement and that sort of thing that you're getting. So pick one of those two. Um, Otherwise, I mean, all those other ones, TikTok, Twitter, um, Snapchat, Pinterest, they're all about pushing traffic. So that might be a different strategy. We're thinking about all of these within the strategy of your marketing, you know, marketing your business. That's why going deep on these is really important, but sometimes it's not in making sales. It's about building traffic and visibility to your product. We want you to shift your mind to realize what's happening with Facebook and Instagram is that they're actually turning it into a sales platform. It's Mm -hmm. shifting there slowly where it's not going to just be about discovery, which Pinterest is discovery. TikTok is discovery. Those platforms are turning into an actual place where they're going to be able to, they already are checking out, right? With Facebook shops or shop Mm -hmm. now or the buttons, it's all turning into that. So as you're thinking about that, think about where your customer is and what are you going to lean into? And I guess what I want to give you permission on is like, if you're not on Pinterest, it's okay. If you're not making TikTok videos, it's okay. But where we see the the dynamic changing right now is with Facebook and Instagram, that these will be placed another place that you can find customers Mm -hmm. sort of organically. Um, They're kind of shifting things, but you can find customers and you can show up for them and you can sell to them. Mm -hmm. So I hope that this was helpful for all of you. I'd love to know out of these strategies, what was a strategy that resonated with you and leave that in the comments, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. And I'll just go over them again. Strategy one was moving online is here to stay. Strategy two is people buy from people. Strategy three shorter versions of content. Strategy four, you're going to customize your customer's experience. And strategy five is going deep and not wide on social media channels. So leave that in the comments. Make sure to like this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to like the page so you can get notified the next time that we show up live. One last thing before we go, we created this podcast as a reminder that you are not alone. Growing your product biz is hard and we want to help you through it. So thank you so much for listening and we truly appreciate it. 
And we want to give a special shout out to all of you that have left us a review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We read all of them and it really helps the podcast reach more small businesses. And one of the reviews we want to read to you is this one from Vanessa Perry of Business and Broomsticks. She says, insightful with no fluff. I love listening to these two. I don't think there is another podcast that offers as much value for free. I love their zero fluff deliverance of information. Their business ethics shine through the way they teach the multiple components to growing a product-based business. They don't claim to have one magic solution. They're entertaining and very fun and easy to listen to. Well, thank you, Vanessa of Business and Broomsticks. That's so kind of you to say. Thank you. And I agree. And that's why it makes it all the more better that this review, because we really do try to have fun, entertain you and give you so much delivery of content. Right. So thank you so much. This really helps us reach more small businesses and support other businesses, which is our mission. So thank you for leaving this review. Hey friend, Mina here. If you're listening to this in real time, I wanted to let you know that the doors are open to multi-stream machine for a very brief time. We get a ton of questions about our signature course, multi-stream machine. So allow me to paint a picture for you. Imagine if you could build a sustainable and thriving business that can not only support itself, but also pay you the salary of your dreams. Imagine if you had a clear roadmap in all things Product Boss so you can create plans and sell more without it being so hard and confusing. Imagine if you could get more customers to easily find you and buy from you without spinning your wheels or being stuck on social media. That's why we created Multi-Stream Machine for product-based business owners just like you to help you 2X to 4X your sales and to grow your revenue streams to create a sustainable business that makes you money in months and not years. Multi-Stream Machine is all about action and implementation. It's a course that will tell you exactly what to do without the guesswork and without the heavy lifting of figuring it out all on your own. It's relieving, it's inspiring, and most of all, it's profitable. So what are you waiting for? Head over to www.multistreammachine.com or click on the link in the show notes to check it out before the doors close. I'll see you over there.